Hello everyone, my name is Loco and welcome back to a professional match of StarCraft 2. Today it's time for a top level game of Zerg vs Terran. This is one of my favorite games that was played during DreamHack 4. And if you haven't seen it yet, I think you're gonna get a kick out of it. So spotting here, in the bottom right hand corner of the map, Death Aura, playing with the blue Zerg drones. He's from Italy, he recently overtook Serral as the highest ranked StarCraft 2 player in the world, and he certainly has not been slowing down since. This man is on absolute fire, and he goes by the name of Raynor. His opponent in the opposite corner. I think, yes, I, I think I'm gonna call this man my favorite Terran player in the world. He's from France. He plays for Team Liquid. If Bjorn was ever considered to be the best, like the best micro Terran player in the world, this is like, okay, this man is kind of like Super Saiyan Bjorn, okay? He's showcasing some ridiculous micro, and I know that he's going to be showing that in this particular match as well, because I've already seen it. But of course, we are looking inside of the main base of Clem. This guy, man. He's looking so good. And I love this story as well between these two. I mean, Clem and Raynor, they came up about, I would say, like three to four years or so ago. They're both 18 years old. I mean, I've casted many of their games in the past, and you know their rivalry, right? The thing is, right now, they are both, like, actually the best players on the planet. I mean, obviously, it's a little bit difficult to say. Uh, Serral is ridiculously good. We know that Parting is really good. Stats is really good. I mean, there's a bunch of really good players out there. Um, but both of these guys are certainly amongst the very, very best in the game right now. We'll see where this is going to go into the future. The thing is, it, it kind of feels... Okay, and this is me just speculating, right? But it kind of feels like some pro gamers that we've seen for many years have peaked. Right? They have reached their, their highest potential. When it comes to both Raynor and Clem, I feel like they're not there yet. I feel like both of them are still improving consistently. Raynor, for example, has been mixing in a lot of lurkers in this matchup in particular. He's been going for Nidus Worms recently. He's been going for Overlord drops with the Nidus uh, and the lurkers as well. I mean, there's so much creativity in his, in his gameplay that I really think he hasn't... You know, he hasn't quite maxed out yet, you know? Like, if he was an RPG character, he hasn't gotten to the max level yet. He's only, like, level 90, okay? He still has a little while to go. And I'm excited to see, especially where they're gonna be in, like, a year or two from now. Because it seems like they're only getting better. And like I said, you know, with Clem especially, this guy, I mean, all the top-level players obviously have impeccable macro, right? I mean, that's kind of a given right now. The times that you could win tournaments just off of really good macro are kind of gone. I mean, I remember Innovation winning tons of tournaments just because he made a lot of stuff. Um, these days, all the top level guys make a lot of stuff, so you can't really differentiate yourself with that anymore. Uh, but Clem, especially when it comes to like microing and splitting his Marines and just the way that he's been engaging, it's been absolutely beautiful. Um, so yeah, I, I hope I can uh, I can show you some of that in this game as well because. It's, it's a very hard skill to acquire, man. It's a really difficult skill to acquire. Like, I've been playing StarCraft 2 for 10 years. I can never get to this level. Like, I I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. But I cannot get to this level. And I'm totally fine with that. Anyhow, here we go. He's gonna try and deny the third base maybe for a little bit. Yeah, the thing is, Terran players have a bit of a love-hate relationship with the third base. They kind of want to delay it, but they also don't want to force Zerk into a two-base opener. It's a bit of a strange situation, because if Zerk is playing two bases, they will mix it up quite easily, and they will usually go for a very quick lair. It's pretty much exactly what Raynor is doing here, so... He's gonna go for the second gas geyser right now, with the natural fully saturated. I wouldn't be surprised to see some gases taken over here too, if he wants to go into that very quick spire play, which seems to be the most popular opener right now, when you start with uh, a quick two base saturation and a much later third. In the meantime, though, on the side of Clem, he's opening up with his beloved bio play. So he's got himself a couple of those uh, Hellions on the other side of the map, making sure that he doesn't actually, you know, take too much damage on those. It's really critical that you keep those alive just to, I guess, especially keep the creep spread in bay, right? So once upon a time, it was very common for these Hellions to just dive into a mineral line and kill 20 drones. And we still sometimes see that happening as well. But most of the time at the highest level, since Zerg players have gotten very good at just defending against these Hellions, we usually see them, uh, you know, being used to maybe do like a distraction move on the one end and then open up, for example, an opportunity for these Marines to kill an Overlord. Um, but they're mostly just here to keep that creep spread at bay for a little while. So notice, by the way, here, the Zerg's Overlord positioning, right? So one Overlord just ended up going down over there. But basically, the way you position your Overlords right now as a Zerg against Terran, you basically position them, uh, position them in such a way that you can see... 
where the Hellions are coming from. Nah, there's a couple of Banelings here. That's not gonna happen, right? There's Zerklings inside of the main base too. Nah, he knew about those. He's gonna get out of there. So, Spire's about halfway done at this point. Not too surprising there. We see the Liberator now joining in too. This is another thing that Clem is actually really good at. So, look at the multitasking already, right? So, he's microing three different armies at once. The Liberator is one of those units that a lot of people will try and get a little bit of value out of, and then they eventually back off. Clem is relentless with this thing. So he's really good at continuously... Ooh. <laughs> microing this one back and forth. Wouldn't be surprised if he's even going to be able to get the kill here on the Queen. Ooh. Yep. There we go. Brenda's little pinky toe right there was still inside of that circle. And it just hurts. It's small little moves that add up over time. This really keeps the Zerg player honest. Ooh. Almost gets himself another Queen there. In a lot of scenarios, that Liberator will even go all the way back home just to try and, uh, you know, get like a, a touch-up and, and back to full HP, right? Maybe they repaint the machine as well. Make sure that it's going to be good to go to battle again. But Clement this, uh, in this situation decided to play a little bit more aggressively because he obviously expects that Spire to become available here very shortly. So he ends up losing that Liberator. So Raynor has been under a lot of pressure up to this point in the game. However, once these Mutas are out, map control goes heavily in favor here of the Zerg. Wouldn't be surprised to see the Bailing Speed follow up here very shortly as well. Additional barracks are now coming up here for Klim. He's going to be forced to defend against these Mutas here for a little while. So, a weak Terran player can be run around for forever, right? If you're a really good Muta player, you can keep a Terran player busy. And usually that's what Zerg players want, right? So basically you make a bunch of Mutas and you try to... Uh, you know, keep them active on the map. You try to build your economy on the back of that as well. And then eventually, once Terran finally gets rid of the Mutas, um, you know, the Zerk obviously is already going to be at a massive army and a massive economy as well. Because this right now opens up the door for perfect creep spread, for perfect macro on the side of the Zerk. It's very much so a high skill unit that really rewards very active play. Which is the reason why I don't really play Mutas very much, because it's so hard to do. Now, interestingly enough, in this game, Raynor actually decides to go for Mutas. I know um, from interviews that he's done in the past, he's very, uh, like, he's a big fan of the Muta, but he never actually really seems to play it against Clem. Reason being, and these are, are, are Raynor's words, reason being is that he thinks that Clem is too good against Mutas. So he tends to not play Mutas against Clem right now. I don't really know exactly why he decided to go for Mutas in this particular game. I mean, for those of you curious, by the way, this is the final match of a best of five series. So this is the Dream Hack for European Winners Bracket Finals. There it is. So this is the uh, the game number five. Now, Zerklings are coming in for the counterattack right now. Since the Mutas were delaying this little run by or this little walk by, I suppose, uh, for, uh, for the Terran player. So I think maybe an SCV or two ended up falling there. Still, though, this army here for Clem is very, very big. The creep spread is decent. Nothing too amazing. Nice little wraparound right here with the Zerklings. Should be able to keep that Siege Tank alive with good micro as well. At the same time, the Mutas are once again trying to engage. Zerklings over there will be cleaned up, and that is an important pickoff. Okay. Siege Tanks left to their own devices here. Yeah. I mean... Decent trade, I suppose. Couple Mutas right there at the exchange of one Siege Tank. Still, though, yeah, Raynor is setting himself up right now for a surround. Banelings are coming from the high ground as well with their Roly Poly upgrade done. They're going to be able to close the distance, especially on the creep, very, very easily. Reinforcing Terran units, though, are arriving. And it looks like Clem is not quite done yet with this harassment. He scans, kills the creep tumors. I love that move. Right now, splits off a couple of his units as well. Are there any more Banelings? Yeah, just about... 12 or so more are, are about to finish, so this is about 20 in total, but by the time that they are done, that fourth hatchery is already gone. Nice pullback there as well, though, from Raynor, so he already actually prepared for that in advance. He made another hatchery in the bottom left-hand corner, so that's where he's transferring those drones right now. It's very easy to try and fight a Terran player off creep, but you don't really want to do it. You don't really want to do it if you can at all avoid it. Now, look at how in sync these two players are. Look at the upgrades. Look at the production tab there. It's actually insane. It's pretty much identical. Alrighty, so, here we go. Terran right now is cycling from the fourth base all the way around towards right now this newly acquired fourth. Once again, though, a lot of that Terran army is currently off creep, but the siege tanks also not siege. Great target firing right there, actually, by Clem, manually targeting with the siege tanks to hit the middle of that clump of the Banelings. The splits here have to be very good if you want to deal with these Zerg armies. 
Look at how well he's controlling this. Oh my god. I love these moves. These give me chills. I, I'm not even kidding. Like, these are nerd chills right here. The way he constantly splits those marines is absolutely phenomenal. It is so difficult to do. Now, reinforcing Terran units once again utilized here uh, to uh, run across the map and chase down some of those mutas. Looks like eventually that uh, that base apparently will be evacuated, which indicates to me that, yeah, Raynor is making the assumption that that base is dead. Now, he's already once again making another fourth base. Big brain moves right there by the Italian. The Italian Stallion is what they call him. <laughs> Little Caesar. I've, I've heard people call him <laughs> Little Caesar as well, which... I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sold on that one, but... The Italian Stallion is also a bit of a curious nickname. Ooh. Okay. So that was a good move, though, by, uh, by Reyna, right? A lot of Zerg players would have continued mining over there, and then you probably lose the base plus, like, 10 plus drones. Um... This is, uh, yeah, not a great situation here for Raynor. He can be overwhelmed here quite easily by that 2-2 timing attack that's coming up very shortly. That's gonna be a near maxed out Terran army. And look at how active Clem is, right? So I love this. Usually, it's the Muta player that's the, the one deciding the pace of the game. However, look at Clem here. He's like, yeah, okay, I know you got Mutas, I know you got Zerklings, but I'll just defend my bases plus, you know, push you. So apparently this is the moment as well where Raynor is realizing that. He's like, wait a second, hold up. I'm supposed to be the one in the driver's seat here. So he's defending right here with Lings and Banes only while the Mutas are being sent across the map. Missile turret gets picked off right away, reinforcing Marines though. Use their Stimpak drugs as well to try and, uh, and deflect some of these flying things. That is a lot of Mutas though. Like it's getting to the point right now where the Mutas can actually take on... These, uh, these Marines quite easily. 3-3 has not started up yet. Double missile turret here over at the fourth base. Looks like the uh, the fourth hatchery of the Zerg once again falls. And Raynor is going to be forced to retreat those drones towards the bottom left once again. Deja vu. We've seen this happen a couple times right now. Looks like that missile turret. Eh, it's not going to go up. but uh, Or it's not going to, you know, get killed here. But still a bunch of SCVs die in, uh, in, in, in favor apparently of the missile turret staying alive. Good move out there, though. All things considered. One cheeky little miss- or one cheeky little widow mine right here in the middle of, uh, an empty patch of creep. Two drones ended up going down as well, but Clem at this point is maxed out, and he's smelling blood in the water. The creep spread? Very much so lacking here. Using even friendly fire there to try and, uh, or, or like splash damage rather, to try and clean that one up. But Clem right now is smelling blood in the water. He knows that Zerk has been on only three bases here for a little bit right now. I mean, he may just be able to secure that base once again. Raynor recognizes the scenario and runs the drones again. At the same time, while this is going on, while Terran is setting themselves up for a kill on that base, the Mutas are going in for the counterattack. Zerklings tried to do the same thing, but these Mutas are now becoming a problem. This is 19 of those bad boys, and they... Like, there's not that much at home, right? I mean... You can see that Clem right now is dedicating a lot of his supply here to moving to the other side of the map. That's a lot of SCVs falling right now. This kind of puts Clem in a weird position because this base, I mean, there's no drones there to be killed. So that kind of justifies losing it. I mean, it's only a couple hundred minerals down the drain there for Raynor. Whereas Clem is now losing way more at home. Reinforcing Terran units, though, are coming out of the barracks here eventually. So these Mutas will probably be... Uh, be deflected here, but that was a, a nice move there by Raynor. I love the fact that he keeps running the drones there, knowing very well that he's not going to be able to keep that location alive, so he just gives it up early, and then dedicates resources to the counter-attack instead. Don't underestimate the Zerk army though, right? So he's stuck on mid-game upgrades, but there's now Burrow available, which is fantastic. Plus, I mean, this is still, uh, you know, the best micro Ling Bane player in the, in the world, right? I mean... That's a bit of a weird sentence, but you get what I'm trying to say. Raynor is very good at microing those links and veins. Good deflections here as well, though, by Clem. Oh, look at the bailing land mines. Oh my god, oh my god. Oh, he scans at the last possible second. That could have been an absolute disaster. Clem does spot those units. I don't know if he knew that they were there or that the opponent even had access to Bailings uh, that could burrow, but it works out just barely in favor right there of Clem. Could have accidentally lost pretty much half of his supply there. At the same time, Zerkling is going in for the counterattack. And this is Raynor's bread and butter. This is what made him a popular player all those years ago. He does lose a couple of Mutas here in the, uh, in the process, but this is a lot of kills right now that he's getting. And for the very first time, it feels like Clem is now up with his back against the wall here over at his third base. 
Still, though, the majority of the Terran army is out on the map. He realizes, okay, if I leave, that creep is going to be everywhere once again. So I want to push forward. Now, I love what Clem does in these situations. Notice what he is doing here. By the way, Mutas are, are going to town after a newly acquired base. Zerklings are dealing a lot of damage, too. But he's never really putting that many of his units on creep. He always positions, like, a very small chunk of his army there. And he's almost, like, inviting these Zerk units to get into the line of fire of those siege tanks. Once again, baits them off creep. Oh, I love it. Burrow. Burrow on the ramp. Since these players are playing extremely quickly, he may have missed that. Look at the actions per minute. This is Raynor now playing at nearly 10 actions uh, a second for the majority of this game. Ooh. Ooh. Oh my god. That is so close. I think that these two are probably the fastest player in the, uh, players in the world right now. Oh my god. Oh my god. Again. He catches them at the last possible second. But yeah, they are extremely quick. Zerk obviously has that rapid fire, but once again, the base falls. Zerk, though, is coming in right now from as many angles as they can. Siege tanks get picked up. Mutas are coming in from the side as well, ready to pick up some of those medevacs. Siege tank there in the back, though, will also be killed. Most of the Mutas are paying for this situation with their life, but for the very first time, it seems like Raynor is getting a bit of a counterattack in. Or rather, a, uh, a bit of like a, a, a fight in over here that, that grants him an advantage. <sighs> Supply count's pretty much dead even. Clem in the meantime, though, while being significantly ahead earlier, is now only at 47 SCVs. That's not a lot. Zerk now has this base in the bottom left-hand corner mining. While he will be forced to rebuild the one over here, if he can stabilize here for a little bit, he should be okay. One of the big problems, though, that Zerk is running into right now is the lack of creep spread and the fact that these rocks are still up. Great targeting there as well. Like, he's manually targeting with the siege tanks to make sure that the, you know, the clump of the banelings is being hit there. Once again, gets a huge, huge, like, hit. And that means once more this hatchery will fall. Since there's no creep in this location, Raynor's not even attempting to, uh, to fight it. He knows very well that he can't. Great back and forth so far. I don't mind this position here for Raynor, but he's not harassing the base here on the left. He's not going to be able to, do, because Clem obviously is sitting over in that position as well. If this turns into a planetary fortress, it's going to be one of the easiest bases for Clem to defend. This is not a situation where Zerk can afford making 30 banelings and just right-click on top of the CC. It's just not something you can really pull off, because he never actually went to his, you know, his comfort zone. I would say Raynor's comfort zone is 100 workers and, you know, sending army after army after army of Ling Bane across the map. He's not there in this match, so he's not going to be able to deny a planetary fortress very easily. Now, apparently, Clem isn't even making anything yet. Maybe he really wants to prioritize maxing out first before making the planetary. Yeah, I think that's what's going on, actually. Oh, he's setting up what seems to be a bit of a... Oh, he wanted to set up like a sandwich there with those marines, but not quite going to happen. Base in the bottom left-hand corner, no longer exists. At this point, Raynor is expanding towards the top right instead. Now, this is becoming a little dire here, actually, for the Italian, because when you look at his bases, this third base is just about to mine out. Fourth base is already heavily oversaturated, and he's long-distance mining. If Taran can kill one more mining base, that's going to be a problem here for the Zerg. Yudas. Ooh. Made a bit of an error there, but they're going to be okay. Once again, attempted burrow there uh, by Raynor. But good scams there uh, by Clem will reveal the position of those Banelings as well. Is that a Reaper? Okay, then. If that's the early game Reaper, that would be fantastic. I don't know if that is the early game Reaper. That would be kind of funny. Well, it is dead right now. Uh, Siege tank there in the back. There's no creep in this area. And once again, beautiful maneuvering right here by Clem, who's at the same time also sending a little hit squad over towards that location. This time around, though, since Clem is so heavily split up and since he does have so much supply caught up in these medivacs, he's not actually able to hold his ground. And that's important, right? Because right now, right now, I mean, he finally gets this base up. He finally secures a fifth. He's still oversaturating. Honestly, with this amount of drones, he needs a sixth base. Main, natural, and third are going to run out very quickly. He needs another base here, and he needs it pretty soon. Terran, in the meantime, still has some mineral patches here available. Planetary Fortress does eventually finish up. And he is now going for what seems to be an all-out assault towards this location on the map. Once again, there's no creep in this spot, so that does mean that Clem should get the upper hand here. And for the very first time, he decides to stim pretty much all of those Marines and moves them forward. Once again, good splits here by the Frenchman. Look at this. Oh, my God. Oh, he spread so beautifully here. That's so sick. 
That's so difficult to actually do at like a moment's notice while also defending against the Mutas at home, right? Base false. And that means right now that Raynor is pretty much broke. He decides to call GG. And with that, it is Clem who obtains the victory here over Raynor. Now, for those of you curious that didn't watch the tournament, I might end up casting a game from that series as well. But Clem then also went on later on into this event and ended up taking out Serral and actually eliminated him out of the event. How crazy is that? Anyhow, I hope you enjoyed watching today's video. If you did, make sure you hit that like button down below. If you want to see more, hit that subscribe button so you get notified as soon as future videos go live. A special shout out to the YouTube members. Thank you very much for your generosity. If you want to join as well, you can click the join button right next to the subscribe button if you're watching on desktop, or you can click the link down below in the description of the video. But for now, I want to thank you for watching. Have an awesome day. Don't forget to smile. And I'll see you once again in the next one.